All right, Kyle Mohan Racing. I don't know if this is really a tech talk. This is more just uh, my opinion on lapping, since I have the lapping table going. And I'm doing some work for uh, some friends and uh, Mazda Tricks and uh, just helping some, some rotary brethren out. But I always hear people projecting opinions on lapping that for some reason lapping in the rotary industry or resurfacing your side housings is risky business or it's it's a uh, potentially not good thing to do and and after being in this industry and building motors and racing rotaries for over 20 years now um, i will say that every motor that's been in one of my personal race cars has been a lapped motor unless it's been brand new side plates and I know rotary shops that lap brand new side plates um, because they're wanting them flat, flatter than maybe the uh, factory uh, gave them to you at. So my opinion on lapping is that it's a good thing. And while I had the table running tonight, I had a diversity of plates and I had some unique stuff show up and I figured this is a great opportunity to talk about lapping and why it is a great thing for rotary motors. And just to put the concept out there, in the piston engine world, you wouldn't really consider a quality rebuild of a piston motor unless you hone your piston walls and you deck the heads and, and do some basic rebuilding. So I don't understand why in the in the rotary world we're not doing more resurfacing than we actually are. And we'll talk about nitriding later. But here's some interesting lapping stuff. So this is often what rotor side plates look like, side housings, cast iron. And you can see this is actually the factory machine marks right there. So this housing's never been lapped in the past. It's kind of an easy way to tell if you see those uh, particular marks. Marks. Um, you can then usually tell that uh, that it's uh, it's never been lapped, and I'm talking about these horizontal uh, machine marks. So it looks pretty good. I mean, really, I think this is a housing that a lot of people would uh, potentially run, and most of the motor looked like this. This is actually the other plate, its front plate sister right here, and you can see it's actually lapping up fairly well. I've already cut off about a thou and a half, close to two thou, so we're already getting through our nitriding. But you can see that there was a potential water seal failure area. Even if you're not so concerned about your oil control seal area or the, the full flatness of the plate, potentially your wear from your side seals or corner seals, this right here is actually the bigger issue. Um, dealing with an area that's actually now been eroded down due to electrolysis, um, or water corrosion or whatever it may be and you have a gap between where the metal to metal contact of your rotor housing to side plate should be and you're enabling water to seep into that water seal area forcing the metal to metal contact that's right in this area to be your main seal so regardless of your where that you're flattening out remember that's what that plate looked like you're fixing your water seal areas, which notoriously people struggle with in the rotary industry when they're doing their own rebuilds and even some shops. And so when you're dealing with uh, side plates, whether they be uh, FC, FD, 20B, 4 rotor, resurfacing in between uh, your run times, seasons, whenever you do come to a rebuild is, is highly advisable, not just because of the wear factor, but because of the metal to metal seal that you're dealing with for your water seal area, which would be very similar to what a head gasket is doing in, in the piston world. So here you have an RX-8 plate, and I find some interesting stuff on RX-8 plates. I think it's just as favorable to resurface RX-8s, although I have noticed that the material seems to be slightly softer of a casting, um, in some cases, not all RX-8 plates, but some. So we have to be careful when we're lapping to not overdo things. 
Uh, same thing, they were nitrided from the factory. I'm not a big believer in the fact that it's a wear changer because you can see right here, this motor did not have over 100,000 miles and it has significant wear where you're still a couple thousandths away. You had significant uh, water seal shrinkage area that was not gonna seal. So as well as uh, aggressive wear uh, from your, your side seals, corner seals and rotor and uh, shrinkage around the exhaust port area, which is a concentrated heat area on RX-8s. So there's really no reason that this housing uh, from a manual transmission RX-8 with uh, around 100,000 miles on it would have actually sealed up for a long period of time, which would have led to potential failure. So regardless of your beliefs of lapping or nitriding, I believe in good water seal um, because that's what, what will make a motor last. Um, this wear also being that significant would allow uh, slight compression loss as well as oil leak down uh, when parked from oil control rings. And you really want to get rid of that, especially if you're using new seals, new components, because you don't want any of your new components to take an old set in the run that's been established there. So you're looking for new break-in surface. So a lot of the times with RX-8 plates, same thing is even though they look good, um, I think people are hesitant to lap and nitriding is always a concern if you're going to rebuild anything that's going racing high performance or uh, long-term street then resurfacing whether you lap whether you grind i think it's really a must we do lapping around here kmr mazda tricks um, you can see one of the other plates in the back here it's a little far away but uh same thing we've almost removed all of our wear but the water seal areas are still culprits um, we're not going to let that go within the reason, within our allowable dimensions that we can resurface. We're going to bring that surface down so this customer gets a good water seal with their rebuilt motor. Um, now, talking about nitriding, I mean, obviously, I think uh, nitriding is good, in my opinion, after lapping. If we're looking for some type of surface treatment, we actually do WPC treatment um, for two reasons. One, it's, it's a surface hardening. And uh, the other is, um, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, we're looking for something that's going to also uh, um, add less, less friction. And the WPC treatment is both a surface hardener and friction reducer. So similar to what uh, they're doing, or some people believe nitriding is doing with surface hardening, we're doing it with WPC when the customer is looking for that. Now, an interesting thing about nitriding is, is uh, a lot of different uh, cast products um, especially ones that are going to be shelved for a long time. Piston blocks, rotary blocks have been uh, nitrided. And, and, and part of it, I was told, and I'm happy with people chiming in on this. Um, you know, everybody uh, is, is able to have their own opinion. It's just what I was told. And I was told this by some pretty influential rotary people that have been in the industry for a long time. And one of the big reasons Mazda went to nitriding, just like many manufacturers have, is for shelf life and rust protection. Uh, Pre-nitriding, things rusted on the shelf, um, which was a big concern. So it's kind of a double bonus. Yes, it, it adds surface hardening. Um, do I think it really cuts down on wear? Not that much. Rotaries run through the surface hardening that is on... Uh, nitrided housings within most cases 20 to 50,000 miles. It really depends on the aggression and how the motor's being used. In some cases, even way less than that if it's under racing or extreme use. So I think there's a lot of options out there. The biggest concern, the biggest thing you have to understand with machine work on an engine, and this is for all engines and just generalization, is stuff has to be cleaned. And there's cleaning processes that are very particular for lapping, for grinding, for lightening, for machine work. And if you're rebuilding a motor and you're not familiar with the cleaning processes necessary, you need to do some internet research. You need to talk to the machinist or the shop that did the process. Um, here, we actually sonic tank uh, the components, and that helps reduce a lot of the buildup. But um, surface polishing and thoroughly cleaning all oil passages is really a must for any machined parts, whether it's lapped, ground, or anything like that. I think most failures are more relative to improper cleaning and improper building 
versus there being an improper shop doing improper machining. But I have seen improper machine work. So it does happen. Um, this has been a, a longer video than I expected it to be. I've even got some more housings I set out down here, what a, uh, a cleaned up turbo housing looks like. But then it actually had water damage from uh, it sitting in a long period in a, a, a wet climate, which is unfortunate because it would have been a good housing, so that, that was a loser. Um, what RX-8 housings look like when uh, they're fresh or when they're uh, used but looking good, and, and this is the same as what's on there. So uh, it will also have some shrinkage around the exhaust port um, and probably some shrinkage around the spark plug area. What they can look like after you do some lapping. I believe in it. I lap my motors. I recommend it. Ask questions. We'll be posting this up on YouTube. Um, I'm sorry if it's pixelated. It looks good on uh, my phone. And uh, I apologize, but you can always catch these videos on our other channels. YouTube, I try to repost everything. And I'm always happy to ask questions. Kyle Mohan Racing, follow, say hi. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I may not be fast, but I, I try to cover all of them. So there you go. Rotary knowledge. Lapping is not so bad. It's actually good. Resurfacing.